as much as it's things for me to admit. I used to be one of those people who thought the whole light, ultralight, super ultra feather air light gaming mouse thing was just kind of dumb. Just a way for people without trypophobia to cut holes in their mice and act like they're superior. But as always, it turned out I was the dumb one and the fedora clad elitists were correct. Light gaming mice, especially wireless ones, are awesome. And because I do suffer from some light trypophobia, ones that are lightweight without looking like they lost the fight to a hole punch are even more awesome. Razer's new Death Adder V3 Pro takes both of those boxes while also sporting one of the best sensors around, ultra reliable optical switches, probably the best ergonomics in the game, and a bunch of other impressive stuff. But there's a big catch, one that might turn this dream mouse into a nightmare. And we'll get into all of that in this review, right after I tell you about today's video sponsor, PC Builder. PC Builder is a service currently available at Computer Mania here in South Africa that makes building your first custom PC or buying a capable pre-built an absolute breeze. Simply pick the games you want to play, select your budget, and PC Builder does the rest, putting together a system to maximize your frame rates while also sticking to your budget. It will even tell you how many juicy frames you'll be able to get out of the system at whatever resolution or settings you'll be playing at, and it also lets you customize the build as much as you want. Don't like the case? Switch it out. Want a motherboard with more USB ports? Grab it. Simple as that. The tool will even helpfully let you know if the parts that you want to add aren't compatible with the rest of the build and gives you a list of other parts that are compatible. PC Builder also keeps track of the power demands of your system and will let you know which power supply you'll need. And heck, it'll even help pick out the best peripherals to go along with your new system. Once you're happy with your new rig, PC Builder and Computer Mania will put it all together, install Windows for you, and you even get a free month of Xbox Game Pass. Every system goes through the testing and benchmark gauntlet to make sure it's ready to go as soon as you get your hands on it, and all builds come standard with a two-year warranty. Almost double compared to the competition. And on top of that, each component in the system is also still covered by their manufacturer warranties. Warrantyception. If any of that sounds good to you, check out the PC Builder tool at Computer Mania right now using the link in the description, or if you want to pick up any of the parts featured in this video, or anything else for that matter, grab it all at TakeLot, also linked down below the like button. Okay, so I usually like to tease you all with specs and a bunch of other stuff before I get to the big catch mentioned at the start of this video, but I'm not going to do that, because the catch here is only really a catch if you're a filthy, disgusting poor, like me. Yep, you guessed it, the catch is the price. Razer is asking a lot for that V3 Pro part of the new Death Adder, $150 to be exact, or around 3,500 Rand here in South Africa. Or if you want to upgrade to the 4000 Hz polling rate, you can get the mouse and Razer's hyper polling dongle bundled for $165. Now, $150 for a mouse uh, is no joke and makes this the most expensive mouse I have ever used. And it puts it in a weird place in the market where the majority of its competition, of which there's a lot, is coming in at way lower prices. That means that this mouse needs to be something really special to be able to justify that pricing. So is it? Let's find out. Now anyone who's familiar with the other mice in the Death Adder range will instantly recognize that this ain't your grandma's Death Adder. The mouse does away with that iconic Death Adder look and shape almost entirely, settling on something a little bit more modern looking, and I very much approve. As you can see, the version we're working with here is the old black one. I'd have preferred the white one because it looks so sick, but Razer probably knows they would have gotten back a sample covered in Gamer Gunk if they did. So fair enough. Anyway, Gamer Gunk aside, this is totally objectively, hands down, one of the best looking mice I've ever seen. The mouse's overall design is phenomenally slick. Clean, traditional, and minimalist, with no unnecessary seams on the top shell, a really nice matte finish all around, and I love that Razer separated the left and right clip plates from the rest of the body. It just gives the whole thing a more futuristic look, even though it might come off as a little bland to some. The mouse just looks badass from literally every angle, even from the back, which is adorned with a Razer logo that looks like it's etched into the body in a way that if you weren't looking for it, you'd probably never see it. Everything about this mouse gives off a premium, no-nonsense vibe, and it just works for me. Now, this might sound a little strange to anyone who's familiar with this channel, since I'm usually in the first-class cabin on the RGB bandwagon, but I actually think that any RGB on this mouse would have made it look a little cheap and 
may be a touch tasteless. I hereby humbly rescind my RGB Coke membership and I'll be returning my card post haste. RGB lighting would have also been a huge detriment to one of the V3 Pro's other most exceptional features, that being a battery that just won't quit. Due to a couple of happy accidents, also known as holding it hostage, I've been able to keep the V3 Pro as my main driver for way longer than usual. And during my last couple of months of using it, I can only recall charging its battery maybe two or three times. This kind of checks out since Razer rates the mouse for up to 90 hours of continuous use at its maximum 1000 Hz polling rate. It's obviously not the best life you're gonna get in a wireless mouse nowadays, but considering everything inside of this thing, it's outrageously good. When you do eventually drain the battery, getting back to 100% will only take you about three hours or so. And during that time, you get to enjoy the light braided and ultra flexible charging cable included right in the box. No cable is ever gonna give you the same feel as wireless, but this one comes pretty dang close. Oh, and just because I absolutely hate it when companies do this, including Razer on occasion, I'm definitely giving Razer some major props for not making the charging port on the mouse one of those with the stupid proprietary shapes that only fits the included cable. Refreshingly, almost any old USB-C connector should work just fine. It's also very refreshing that we haven't really needed to worry about performance of good wireless mice for the last couple of years, and that's definitely the case here with the Death Adder. I've always found Razer's wireless tech to be pretty damn rock solid, and the Death Adder V3 Pro continues this trend. With Razer's hyperspeed wireless tech, the mouse hasn't steered me wrong even once, with zero noticeable click latency and unsurprisingly reliable performance throughout my time using it. Now, while I'm not complaining, since I understand that Bluetooth wouldn't allow the mouse to live up to its full potential and would add some weight, I do wish Razer had stuffed it in somewhere. Just would have been nice. Anyway, putting all of that other stuff aside, I have to dig into the weight and build quality of this thing because I honestly didn't think it was possible to have a mouse that's this size and of this quality that's this light without like relying on horrifying honeycomb cutouts or any cutouts at all really. The mouse lands at just 63 grams total without a single hole in sight other than the sensor one, obviously. And that's one hell of a feat on its own. My eyes tell me that the V3 Pro is going to be at least around the same weight as my Mamba Elite, but it's in fact 33 grams lighter and you can absolutely feel the difference. Hell, even my glorious Model O comes in heavier at 68 grams, and that's with a bunch of holes everywhere. But even with its lightweight, the mouse doesn't rattle like a keyboard in desperate need of some lube. In fact, it doesn't rattle at all. And while the plastic shell does feel kind of fragile, like you can somehow feel how thin the shell is, at the same time, it's clearly reinforced in all the right places. There's not a creak or a squeak when you try to crush it after taking three L's in a row because your teammates are pathetic, filthy casuals. And if you don't like the feel of the plastic all that much, or you tend to have sweaty hands, which is totally fair, Razer also includes a set of high quality rubber grip tape strips right inside the box that feel great in the hand, and they also look pretty sweet once you get used to them. And speaking of holding things in my hand, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't fault a single thing about the ergonomic feel of the V3 Pro. The mouse is ergonomically designed for right-handers and as a smooth-brained right-hander with a hand size of about 21 by 13 centimeters, it's an ergonomic masterpiece. The mouse has a bit of a raised arch on the left palm and the pointer finger area, and it flares out ever so slightly on the ring finger side of, of the mouse, uh, which provides a ledge for your finger to rest on and this configuration like caters to my hand perfectly. The mouse is slightly on the larger size of the scale, which also helps a lot here, especially for those with hybrid palm slash claw grips like myself. For casual web browsing and general use, the mouse molded to my hand comfortably. But when the time came to pop some heads in Apex, switching to a more claw oriented grip to dial in those headshots happened reflexively and the raised arch never got in the way of any like clutch flick shots or quick aim adjustments. Aim adjustments that wouldn't be nearly as accurate or snappy without the bonker sensor razor stuffed into this thing. The V3 Pro sports the same um, Focus Pro 30K sensor, the same one in fan favorites like the Viper V2 Pro and the new darling Viper Mini Signature. As the name would suggest, the sensor features a wacky DPI of 30,000, has a max acceleration of 70G, a max speed of 750 IPS, and an incredible claimed resolution accuracy of 99.8%. 
And for those of you who know, you know how good that is. And for anyone who doesn't, holy crap, that's good. I've never been particularly great at tracking like erratically moving enemies or constantly pulling off headshots mid fights since I play pretty casually and suck. But even I was able to notice a measurable improvement in my accuracy. So I have no doubt that anyone who's actually good at games would definitely notice it a lot more than I would. The sensor will also work just fine on pretty much any surface, including glass, as long as it's four millimeters thick. It's more power efficient, can auto calibrate itself according to whatever surface it's used on. And like a lot of other modern sensors, it lets you adjust the mouse's liftoff and landing distance. But unlike most other sensors with just a couple of levels to choose from, with the new sensor's asymmetric cutoff feature, you get friggin' 26. That granularity should help pros make those big movements without needing to worry about the mouse tracking like when they don't want them to. And speaking of those big movements, the mouse's 100% PTFE feet, while nothing particularly special, did allow the mouse to glide perfectly on pretty much every surface I tried it on. The only issue is it, they do look a bit on the thin side compared to on the other mice I've used. So they might need replacing sooner rather than, rather than later. But if you're serious about your mouse's performance, you might wanna look into getting something like those fancy super glide skates anyway. Something else you'll appreciate as a normal gamer, but a heck of a lot more as a sweaty pro gamer are the buttons on the V3 Pro. Simply put, the left and right switches on this thing are some of the best in the West and everywhere else for that matter. The switches sound and feel reassuringly snappy and crisp, are perfectly consistent, feeling and sounding exactly the same months after use as they did on day one, and they have very, very little pre and post travel. And they're just so freaking satisfying to click. But even more than that, they're optical. Gen 3 Razor Optical to be exact, and all you need to know about that, without getting all technical about it, is that when you click, an infrared light shoots through the, the switch to actuate it, and all that happens in just 0.2 milliseconds. So essentially, these things actuate instantly, and because the whole thing's optical, there's no debounce delay to worry about at all. Which also means no accidental double clicking an issue responsible for 90% of my annoyance with all of the other mice I've ever used. Oh, and the switches are rated for like 90 million clicks, which is 50,000 clicks every day for five years. So yeah, there's that. But the left and the right clicks don't deserve all of the glory. The two side buttons are on the larger end of the scale, making them hard to miss. And they're perfectly laid out just above where my thumb actually rests and that makes them super easy and comfortable to press. And they also feel almost as snappy and like satisfying to press as the left and right clicks. The scroll wheel uh, it is nothing too special and it doesn't need to be. It takes less force to turn than the ones on my other mice, but you can clearly feel every single like step along the way and I think the noise it makes is pretty fun. The middle click takes about medium force to press, just how I like it, and it has a more thunky rather than snappy sound, which is fun. The only part about the whole shebang that I don't like is the lack of tilt functionality on the scroll wheel, since I use that for productivity tasks like whenever possible. So that sucks. Now, there is a button on the mouse that I just outright don't like, and that's the power slash DPI adjustment button. The pure and simple reason is that it's not where it's supposed to be. The issue here is that Razer opted to put it on the bottom of the mouse, and I hope whoever decided to do that gets a light but meaningful slap on the wrist. Look, I'm not someone who constantly switches my DPI every time I switch a weapon or anything like that, but for regular desktop use, or so when I'm playing RTS games, I like to have my DPI pretty high. Then I have different DPI levels set for different game genres. But 
the, the problem is that when I'm editing videos or using Photoshop, I cycle through the low DPI settings on the fly all the time. So even though it takes like two more seconds to flip the mouse over to pick the button, like it's an extra step and thus annoying. But at least the mouse like stores profiles um, on the mouse itself. With, so all of your settings are on the mouse, that, that, that's kind of nice and lessens this thing just a little bit. Oh, and before we start wrapping this whole thing up, I just need to mention that Razer's Synapse software has improved a lot since I last delved into it. Uh, I didn't run into a single bug while dialing in all of my settings for the B3 Pro or any bugs since. And that was a big issue I've had with Razer's mice in the past. So uh, good job, Razer. And legitimately good job on the Death Adder V3 Pro. Out of all of the mice I have ever used, this has to be my favorite and by a pretty long shot. It's incredibly lightweight for a solid shell mouse and just in general, it looks phenomenal. It's incredibly comfortable to use in any situation. The battery life is stupendous. The buttons are heaven and you honestly cannot argue with the performance, especially if you're uh, like a competitive player. Of course, shape is king and how much you'll enjoy the mouse will depend heavily on how big your hands are and what like grip you use. So if it doesn't fit your hand well, it won't be uh, like a good fit for you. But if it does, man, you're going to love this thing just as much as I do. Which makes this next part pretty hard to say, but I've got to say it. I can't actually recommend going out and buying the Death Adder V3 Pro. At least not to everyone watching this video. The mouse's high price tag, while understandable for like the most part, puts it in the realm of the ultra competitive gamer. The gamer who wants to be the best, wants every little edge they can get their hands on and is unwilling to compromise. Uh, or just a gamer who wants a great mouse and doesn't mind paying a premium for it. And if either of those applies to you, then what are you waiting for? Go for it. For the rest of us though, who feel uncomfortable dropping that amount of money on like a mouse, there's a lot of competition out there. Competition that'll buy you an experience very close to what the Death Adder V3 Pro delivers, but at a way more reasonable price point. And yeah, that's me done. Before hitting that like button to let me know that you enjoyed this video, remember to check out the PC Builder tool via Computer Mania link down below if you're in South Africa and looking to build your first rig or upgrade it or whatever. Or if you want to buy any of the mice I talked about in this video or anything else for that matter, do it at Take Luck, also linked down below. All right, have a good one and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.